Hi, Drecky here, and today I'm reviewing the B-Ben MN9 Stick PC. I've seen these things floating around on Amazon and AliExpress for a while now, and I've always wondered whether or not they were any good. Well, it turns out that it really depends what you want to use it for. I was just looking for something small that could play Netflix in 1080p, browse the web, and occasionally run Photoshop when I needed to edit an image or two, and for that it works fine. But it's worth noting right away that the processor in this thing is not capable of doing much heavy lifting, such as multitasking or running programs that take up a lot of processing power, like games. The box that this stick comes in is rather flimsy, and I'm actually surprised that it survived international shipping as well as it did. The box only includes three components, the stick itself, a power cable, and an HDMI extension lead. When we take a look at the stick, there's an HDMI out port on the end, the power port on one side, and the micro SD and USB ports on the other. The top has a power button, and the bottom has grills for heat dissipation. The case is covered in some sort of soft touch plastic that scratches rather easily. Nothing about it screams quality, but it's not terrible either, so I'll give it a pass on that. Setting up the stick was very straightforward. Just plug it into the HDMI and power, plug in the receiver for a wireless keyboard and mouse combo, and then turn it on. Startup is quick, in fact faster than my projector could turn on, so I hardly even noticed it. The stick immediately found my Wi-Fi network, connected to my Bluetooth stereo, and then I started installing apps and updates. Once I had all my apps installed, I started to use the computer like I would normally. I loaded a couple web pages, I loaded a messenger, I ran Skype, that sort of thing. And for day-to-day -day operations, everything is just a little bit on the slow side, especially when it comes to multitasking, but it's not unbearable. It's just that I was constantly aware of a half second of delay compared to on my gaming computer. But if you're used to low-end computers from the last couple years, things like browsing the web, installing programs, and loading documents will not be much different than you're used to. Where I noticed the slowness the most was on content-rich pages. For example, thumbnails on Netflix took their sweet time to load and that was a little bit frustrating. I wouldn't expect this computer to be able to handle 4K video, but it did fine for 4K playback when the file was on the computer itself but 4K streaming didn't work. Sites like YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter all run fine too. Even Photoshop CS5 ran alright for quick photo editing. For the most part, the computer is alright. I'd call it fine, but not fast. And if you run any benchmarks, the results are really, really low though, so that goes to show that it can run alright, but, you know, I, I just wouldn't really recommend it if you needed to do any heavy lifting. Now, one thing the computer doesn't do at all, speaking of heavy lifting, is gaming. And I mean like, it does not do it at all. I installed Steam just to humor myself, but uh, yeah, it wasn't really worth the storage space that it took up. Basic Flash games run fine in the browser most of the time, and so does Solitaire, but anything more than that and the stick just bogs right down. I even tried to emulate PlayStation 1, which even cheap Android boxes can usually do, and while it did work, it skipped frames and jittered a little too much for my taste. If you want to play games, this is not the device to buy, stick to a gaming computer or a console. My biggest concern with this stick is that it generates a lot of heat. One of the reasons I bought this one over the others on the market is that it advertised having a built-in fan, but it's only somewhat true. The fan that's built into it is more like a case fan than an actual processor heat sink. Meaning while it does suck some hot air out of the case, it doesn't really do much more than that, and I don't believe that it's actually attached right onto the processor. The computer itself idled at 65 Celsius, and I was able to push it to 85 while running benchmarks and difficult tasks. This processor is only able to handle up to 90 degrees Celsius. I never got it to shut off due to thermal overload, but I do suspect that if I had any sun on my desk while it was running, it wouldn't do so well. After using it for a couple hours of watching TV, the case becomes noticeably warm, but it's not uncomfortably hot. Because of the heat dissipation being fairly poor, the device is quick to throttle itself down under stress, which means it slows the processor. I think that this had the biggest effect on performance because, for example, when I was running PlayStation games, they'd be fine for the first couple minutes, but once the temperature started to go up due to processor stress, the game started to skip and lag. Once the novelty of having a full Windows PC in the size of a USB stick wears off, you're left with an overall slow, but serviceable PC. It's more or less what I'd expect from hardware that's under 100 US dollars, so I can't exactly fault it. The thing does run Netflix and YouTube at 1080p fine after all, and that's primarily what I bought it for. In my case, I didn't want to have my giant gaming PC with all its noisy fans running whenever I just wanted to stream some TV, 
so I decided to buy something that was really low wattage and that would smarten up my dumb projector. I can't stand the Android TV boxes, so this was the next best option. It's otherwise hard to think of a specific use case where I would recommend a PC in this form factor over something like a tablet or a full-size desktop, because it's stuck somewhere in the middle ground where it doesn't really do either fantastically. It's not really portable, and it can't really run any heavy lifting tasks that you'd use a desktop for. It's not so slow that I found myself annoyed with it, but there is a noticeable speed difference between this and something a little bit higher end. In the end, do I recommend it? Maybe. If you're just smartening up a dumb TV, it might be a good option, but if you're looking for something to do a little bit heavier lifting than your smartphone or tablet, it doesn't really totally replace a desktop computer. Thank you for watching. Visit DreckyTech.com for more. Actually, I did just think of another use case. This thing would make a great point of sale computer for small businesses. You don't really need gaming hardware for a point of sale, so this would do just fine for that.